stars to go for the I don't know why they no, no, it's fine, yeah, because they didn't have those two. Oh, no, because he said, oh, he's got, he's got a small man for most people's nipples, and I've got really tiny nipples as well. So, <laughs> 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 Twitter 
all of the terrible things I said within the sanctity of the car. Um, and uh, the very worst of which was whilst trying to remember the word women. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to remember the word women. I just couldn't remember. You know, you're sitting there, you what's the word? What's the word? What's the word? You try and describe it. You try and talk. <laughs> what's the word? What's the word? And I don't remember this, so it probably never happened. <laughs> but, um, except I do remember it definitely does happen. But I'm trying to put uh, Instead of using the word women, just come around with women, I use the phrase things you have sex with. <laughs> <laughs> now, unfortunately, for a lot. Unfortunately for Rob P, then went, oh, uh, uh, a heated watermelon. Um, <laughs> just a can of spam. <laughs> <laughs> we'll crack in the floor. Um, we, get, we never got any one here, so we One of the uh, one of the most fun things about doing uh, comedy is the is the car journeys, and we have um, sort of little games that are supposed to stay in the car. Um, that's the rule. It happens in the car, it stays in the car. And we have a, one of the things is, uh, is top three, which is who are the top three uh, comedians of your sexual inclination that you would have sex with on the comedy circuit. And uh, this wasn't Robert Thoughts. Someone else said the far word horrible thing. <laughs> but we were discussing a female comedian uh, who is mentally. And uh, one of my friends <laughs> described having sex, uh, what he imagined having sex with her would be like, as like bathing a cat. <laughs> <laughs> there were just nails flying <laughs> from you out to her, uh, scratch marks everywhere. Uh, oh, gotcha. Um, it's on the list. Um, do we have any more questions? Yes, Neil, yeah, we'll Oh, well, the best kid stories don't make any jokes. You just go, I did a gig at the Glade, it was lovely. <laughs> it's, not, it's just bragging. It's just, uh, yeah, 450 people, I don't know where was. Mm. Uh, they, they, they don't make for the funny stories. The bad gigs make for the funny stories. I did a gig in uh, Wolverhampton for a charity a while back. Uh, not a proper charity, it was one of those sort of like, hey, it's a charity fun day. And they said, we want three comedians for this. And we all got roped into it. And it was, uh, we were on before the karaoke. We were supposed to be on after the karaoke. We went, no, we were on before the karaoke. We were sat in what was the green room, which was just sort of broken cupboard. And this bloke who was on later wandered out. And we chatted for a bit. And then he wandered back in, having blacked up, <laughs> so he could play Louis Armstrong. <laughs> and this was in the year of our Lord, 2011. Right? <laughs> Last year, <laughs> was, but the amazing thing was, he piped up, but he wore gloves. So uh, I don't know, there's something there about him. Oh no, I'll pluck up the face, but uh, I'll wear gloves. Weird. Uh, but I'm just sort of sitting there, just going, that is really, and then, um, yeah, it's really strange. Uh, so that was a, a really weird gig. Um, one of the weird things you do about weird things is when you're just not allowed to say, someone saying, don't say a thing. Something bad has happened in the general area. If you say this thing, they're going to hate you, and your brain will not leave that alone. <laughs> it's like one of those that when you've got a loose tooth, it's just like poke that, poke that, poke that. Go on, go on, go on. Talk about that. Go, no, I can't. Um, so yeah, there's been numerous stuff. Where's Rob? And just go out there and go straight away. <laughs> we did a gig. Uh, Rob, one of Rob's jokes. I think one of your opening jokes is about cancer. And the, uh, and the the landlord of the pub had just lost his mind within that like week into cancer, and Rob just went, "No, doing it anyway. We've got us. It's on the list." <laughs> as I said, this, I've got to say it now. Why have you killed his wife? No. <laughs> you said that in a way that um, I'll be honest. Don't protest too much. <laughs> Sanchez, because that's if it's the object of Sanchez. 
Um, but I said to you, used to be just saying the word bass, because bass is quite a basic word that's to say bass, and then people couldn't test if there's too much bass on it. And then just got extended to going in, bass, how long can you go death? <laughs> what what the hell? Once again, right in the incredible, prime animal, the young cannibal, people get the number one, that looks a freeze, and I got one, can I tell them that I never really had a go? It's a rap that doesn't want to go Now they got me myself, and I'm going to go what you want to do, what you want to do is follow for now, hold the pins in, make the miracle, I've got the miracle, back is black hole in, we're going to win Jigga! Just before I went on stage, I went, oh, need a quick toilet. 
and went in, pushed the door of the toilet, and he was collapsed on the toilet like that. And I went, You're right, Rudy. He went, You're racist. Uh, and I told that to Stanish, and they looked from going from hating me to going, Oh, he hates the twat in the audience too. They're going to be fine. Um, that was a weird gig, wasn't it? A weird gig. We stayed up until uh, four o'clock. Yes, that, when, you, when, 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 we, when we're talking about um, have you ever said anything that's really truly wrong? <laughs> no. And basically, it started off because me and Rob were complaining that there was no, there's no longer black exploitation movies. That black exploitation was a sort of genre in the 70s when they made movies specifically for black audience. And they used to just change little bits of already existing films. So you get sort of like Dracula becomes Blackula. You can just add the word black in there to make the thing. And I was saying, oh, I don't know why they never came back. It's probably because they, the first ones they started with were uh, No Country for All Black Men and a little bit of black blood. So they got the wrong audience, right? And they went on. The people that we were with didn't get what we were doing, me and Rob, and just going, like saying the most horrific racial slurs. Basically, and so we were sort of saying this. And yeah, I found a note on my. Uh, that I had to put on Facebook at four in the morning. I love lock-ins. Uh, <laughs> I have no recollection of saying that. But yeah, that was uh, that was one of those ones that you don't want anyone to see you do or mention two years later at a gig during a Q&A session. Um, no. Um, okay, to the point of there. Um, <laughs> go on. What was your question? What was the observation of comedy in the future? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is part of the thing, because I, I mentioned before that my brain is a horrible, terrible place to live, as you can see. And um, I was worried about, because I have no other skills, I have this. <laughs> it's, it's a silly, silly job. And uh, I was genuinely worried that one day they're just going to go, Tony, why are we living in a hovel? And you go, because I didn't cover any so. <laughs> Silly, stupid comedy, and I didn't get a proper job. Right, uh, and I was genuinely worried about what um, comedy would be like if the apocalypse happened because I have no other skills. <laughs> and so just sitting there, just going, Hey, good evening, yeah, it's nice to be here in Sector 7. <laughs> but, uh, but then last night I was in the uh, tortured nuclear wasteland formerly known as Earth, so it's nice to be anywhere. You know. <laughs> Say good evening, girl, it's hard to tell we blacked out the sun. <laughs> uh, yeah. Why is it? Why is it, like, you know, Why is it when you're uh, when you're getting all those little bits of scraps of rubber and you're trying to cook a leg that you found, you know, little scraps of rubber, and you're trying to burn them and you're cooking the leg? Why is it then? Like, rain is a time. Who's there? Yeah. Uh, I'm allowed to say that because uh, some of my best friends are rainers. Uh, well, not my best friend, though, uh, because uh, he's just the man I see most often because he's taking my son hostage. I just want it back. Just want it back. But um, he, wanted, he wanted eight tins of beans for him, and I've only got seven. Two of them got sausages in, so. Uh, yeah. Now, the kids, though, they're, they're sort of funny things. Like, you've got kids, you've got kids, you know, they're sort of funny things. But uh, one the other day, he said, Tell him my foot hurts, my, my foot hurts. So he took his shit off and he was crawling with maggots. So the funny things. So, anyone in from Sector 9? Uh, give me six. Ah, oh, I didn't see that shit. So that'd be comedy in a post apocalyptic nightmare. <laughs> What's the most interesting is I don't know whose voice I'm doing yet. Um, a sort of generic mid 90s observation of comedy. Well, the most interesting is because I grew up on observation of comedy, I just thought it was just saying what you think. And I lost my, um, I lost my virginity quite late. I was quite a late bloomer. And I, so all of my sort of thinking about how sex was supposed to go was taken from early 90s, early <laughs> 90s thing. So I was fully expecting to it to be a horrible, awkward mess, uh, just sort of like, oh, I'm going to finish too soon, I'm going to have a good foreplay, I'm going to miss that, I'm going to be able to find a photo I'm going to leave my socks on, I'm going to fall asleep immediately after. Um, and then none of that happens. And I've been told I can't tell that to material because it was just bragging. Um, <laughs> please, I'm competent. <laughs> That's what they call me. Call them. Call, call the competent savage. Um, <laughs> he's also quite autistic, so I'll be thorough. Um, <laughs> 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 my parents' parents have never been to see me again. Um, which, um, so I'm going to put that 
proud of none. <laughs> but it's, they're, they're not unproud. And uh, my mum did. <laughs> this is uh, this is just a little thing about my career as at the moment. Uh, my mum was on the phone the other day, and uh, she was catching up some relative I didn't know on where me and my brother and my sister and my cousins were. And usually comedians they will do poetic license to the great majority of them are like exaggerate. None of this is made up, this is word for word, right? Uh, so she's like, oh, our David's just got a job at the British school and he gets his own driver, he gets his own house, he's got his own maid, it's amazing, right? Uh, our Becky, she's just got a job at, as a tutor in Dubai, amazing. Uh, Vicky, she's just got a, uh, a speech at the UN uh, for Norwegian people to get to do in Norway with Kofi and that, it's amazing. Uh, Mark is a, uh, is a consultant out in um, Amsterdam. Chris is going around the world traveling, that's pretty cool. Uh, Nick's just been promoted for his job as an actor in London. And Paul. Uh, Paul drove 300 miles to do a gig in Portsmouth last night. <laughs> no, I think he got paid. <laughs> and I did! I got paid! Oh yeah, I got paid! I got paid, the gig didn't even happen. It's how fucking good I am. I'm really annoyed, bro. Thank you.